So the next uh, next speaker is Damien Meyer. He's Canadian representative Link. I don't know if you guys know Link from Germany. One of the largest European manufacturers of sawmill machinery. Engineer and holder of a master's degree from the Ecole Nationale Supérieure des Technologies and Industries du Bois en France. Uh, he has more than 25 years experience in many wood industry sectors, sawmilling, forest operations, veneer, furniture, tropical woods. He is a specialist in international market development and as such he's traveled on all continents. Please welcome Damien Meyer. Well, thank you, Bill. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Montreal Wood Convention. So as I said, I'm Damien Meyer. I'm the representative of uh, Link Gambia here in Canada. And I hope this is working. No. Oh, God. We are far away. All right. We're back to square one. So, so um, as I said, yes, we will be talking about Link. And uh, you know it, we are based in Germany. And maybe we're going to spend just a little time going over the history of Link. We are in business since more than 170 years. In the 1820s, Link appeared on the radar screen as a foundry. And then quickly, the family uh, specialized in sawmill machinery and sawmill equipment, which is no mystery because we are based on the foothill of the Black Forest with plenty of wood and forest activity around us. Um, after the war, Link developed the gang saws, and uh, that was uh, a very reliable, profitable tool. We sold 5,000 of them worldwide, including here in Canada on the East Coast and the West Coast. Some of those gang saws are still in operation today, and we still supply the, the spare parts and the service. Um, after that, things changed in Europe. We had a um, situation where logs became less available, more expensive, uh, lumber prices didn't go up. It was difficult to get people and maintain people. At that time, Link uh, was approached by the industry. And uh, the guy said, well, if you don't find a solution here, we're going into the ditch. We need a much more effective type of equipment. And so Link developed the profiling line. In 79, uh, the first profiling line was installed in Austria, um, in Österreich, at uh, Maya Melnov. And since then, we have been adding profiling lines regularly worldwide. As we speak, I guess we are at number 162 profiling lines in the world. Later on, as you can see, we developed the technology further. We added um, sideboard optimization, curve sewing, log rotation, and so on and so forth. As Link became more and more global, we had to face another reality. Logs elsewhere do not grow like in Europe. They are more bended, crooked, coarse grain, knots. So we had to develop also the according tools to handle that. Today, Link is still a family-owned business, human size, around 300 people. Uh, it's important to realize that we have only very high qualified people. The, there's unbelievable know-how inside the Link uh, company. And um, the key thing is to maintain that know-how, hence the apprentices, which are a crucial link of the chain. Turnover, 50 million euro, as said, average mid-sized company. What do we do at Link? Well, we transform logs from the round log to squared, finished lumber, usually in one single pass. To do so, you have several types of um, families of equipment. For the um, huge mills, the monster mills, capacity a uh, million cubic meters of logs per year, 600 feet per minute, the big numbers, that's the profiling technology on the top. But next to the monsters, there's also, and here like in Europe, a uh, fabric of uh, let's call it family-owned, meat-sized business. They do not want to run a million cubic meter logs per year. They are numbers like 100,000. But they want this 100,000 to be transformed in the, mess, in the best possible way. They want flexibility and accuracy. Hence, they're reducing technology 
we reduce from the round log to square number. Then we have a few specialty um, applications, the short log profiling, specialized for the packaging industry. Short logs means down to four feet, meter 20. The small log processing, logs from three and a half inch to 10 inch, ideal for Scandinavia, Russia, Siberia, Canada. And the in connected with the log lines, the, the link lines, I mean, the round log handling, which is, could be um, a log yard or the feeding. Our lines are very efficient, and we intend to stay like that, hence the optimizing systems. Now we go back to the subject. So the profitable investment. And an investment, well, there's different ways to consider, to measure how your investment is profitable or not. And here you would have a few points which have to be met to, for that uh, investment to be profitable. You need to produce more volume of lumber in this case per time unit, per hour, per day. You need to reduce the production cost by reducing labor, maintenance, operating costs. Do your lumber made out of that investment um, has to be of a superior quality on an appearance point of view, but also on a size effectiveness. The recovery that's given. If you improve your recovery, you produce the same amount of logs, you don't need to buy more. You use the same amount of people, same amount of building, same amount of machinery, but you just produce more lumber, immediate profit. And once you have your investment decided, well, then you want it fast. You want your equipment in your building fast, installed rapidly, and starting the production in a steep curve. We're going to look at the lean line in action. So you see, logs are entering the line. To reach speed, you should be here at 550 feet per minute. The spike walls rotated the log in the proper position, and then maintained in this very position, he is going through the first uh, heads of canter. Then we rotate the log flat, so the curvature in the first step was horned down or horned up. Now we lay the banana flat, which will have the, net end, the advantage down the road to, um, to curve so whatever candidate needs to be curved so. Whoever is straight remains straight. And whoever has a curvature, the machine will actually decide which curvature is the best and will actively impregnate that ideal curvature to every single log. You notice that the line is working well by itself. There's, of course, nobody fooling around the line. The line runs with one single operator. Here we are at the second canter heads. Now we have a, a square, or actually four-sided cant. Here we can take another measure to control that the weighing is where it was supposed to be, that indeed what was planned we, we, uh, happened in reality. You notice the safety fence around the line. In Germany, they have very strict rules in the sawmill industry. Here you see the profiler heads coming in action. They remove on the go whatever is usually removed later on edges. And here in the separator is dropped the side products which are finished lumber. No need to go to an edger or something. This lumber goes straight to the sorting line. The can keeps on going its way. We lay it back again 
to do exactly the same on the two other sides, where we will profile again whatever has to be. You will notice that again we can do here two pairs of side products. If your logs are relatively small, it could be just one pair of side products, that all depends. You realize also that the gap has increased since the beginning. Here we are with the profiler heads and the final set of circular saws that cut open the core and remove the side products. Here the line, as said, nobody. And you notice here that the, um, the boards coming from the, the sides are actually different in, in, in size than the one in the center. So we usually like to keep them separate. It makes little sense to get them back together and unscramble them again later. This summarizes a little bit what is called the European approach. The gentleman before me mentioned that. Uh, we favor the process of sorting logs. We believe it brings much more productivity. There's a small log gap. And uh, of course, small log gap means you increase the sewing capacity. On this animation, we are actually on a different type of uh, production um, method. We go logs uh, unsorted, uh, scan and set. So a log comes in, the optimizer has determined what the best cutting pattern is for that log. The spike rolls position it, and then it's maintained and it goes through the canter heads. And once you have the two sides done, well then it gets easy to be, uh, to be processed further down the line. Now look at this guy who just went through. The proposed cutting pattern is this. And you see the spike rolls that will turn the log until the blue are on the top. The next guy, well, this is this cut best cutting pattern. So again, his history is set. He will go down the line when we'll be processed exactly as such. And here comes yet another one. Each of them is treated individually. There is no one size fits all because they all have a different size. And where there is meat, there will be a board. So as said, unsorted logs, gaps still relatively small. We do that because we use fast um, hydraulic cylinders. And we have a tendency of moving the log around the tools rather than moving the equipment, which uh, usually ends up in a lot of premature wear and tear. Um, still in the more capacity per time unit, this screen is actually coming from a control screen from a link line installed somewhere in Germany. And they have a device called the, the gap adjustment device. In the middle, in purple, you see what is actually ideal and what is achieved with that gap uh, control device. And you have always the best possible gap if you are too short or too long, which is the uh, yellow graph on the left, imagine you had to have 60 centimeters in an ideal world, two feet between two logs. But you're missing 50 centimeters. You're down to 10 centimeters, four inch. That's not enough. The log will go through. He has to go to the next set. The arbors and the saws do not have the time to adjust accordingly. What, so what happens? The line <laughs> breaks down or even worse, stops. Immediately your production goes in the shoes. You don't want that. If it's too long, it's not better. Two meters, that's almost seven feet. You're missing a log here. If this happens on and on, again, production, not good. Here another sheet, um, also taken in a, in a sawmill that's in, a, in a Austria. And um, you see on the left, it's actually the summary of a whole week. And um, the line on top, is the summary of all those days, day one, two, three, four, five. And it gives to the operator, the management, the, the people in the control tower, if it's a remote place, all the information in real time what has happened. So during that week, they have plenty of information. The number of pieces that were produced, uh, the average length, the average width. 
they have the total cubic meter produced that week. Important thing here is AB, Ausbeute, the yield. Now in Europe, just to make a point here, in Europe we use a volume of one cubic meter of log coming in, processed, and then we measure the real number produced on the outside. And that gives a percentage. I converted it in what is used traditionally here, and 70% would be 2.3 cubic meter of logs to produce 1,000 board feet of lumber, or the other way around, it would be 428 board feet of lumber produced out of one cubic meter of log. So fairly decent uh, yield. Here, per day, number of, when it starts, 6 in the morning, and then stop at 10 o'clock in the evening, and then the production time for that week, and then always what the management wants to know, Störungen, the mishap. And in that week, they had 10.39 hours of mishap. And that usually somebody wants to know what, what happened. So it's broken down here on the other graph in detail. That, of course, is available in every language, wherever we install the, the line in Chinese and Japanese and whatever. Um, and you have the detail for any Störung, what it is. Is it a link equipment? Which one? Where? Is it an uh, electronic eye, a sensor, which is full of dust, full of dust and is not able anymore to do its job? So it's signal, Achtung, something is happening here. It can be things around the link line. It can be the upstream, downstream, the belt conveyor, removing the scrap. It can be many things. And usually that is good because after a while you are able to address what has happened here or there. But then still with this 10 hours and something of Störungen, we have an availability of the line of 87%, um, which is a very good number. The link line usually are at 90-something in efficiency. That is absolutely common numbers. Now, how do we uh, reach that and maintain it over the years? Well, we have very robust equipment. They're built to last. It is not uncommon to have link lines running 30 years. We lose the best components. And at the end, well, the equipment is highly um, reliable. Now, still in the, the reduction cost, as we mentioned before, the reduction of the cost, we have one single operator. So the link lines always run with one guy. He sits in a control room, and as you see, he's facing the outside. His main concern is to feed that line. With the speed, 600 feet a minute, up to 50 logs per minute, he doesn't want to miss a log. So the, the, the infeed is usually doubled from left, right, left, right. And then what happens after that is all set. But he controls everything with his monitors. So he can see everywhere if something is happening here or here or here. He has many control buttons and flashlights who signal anything happening in that line and can be addressed. It, can, it will even um, indicate upcoming troubles like the amper goes up here, something is not right, bearing might be on his way out, so we have to maybe to arrange that on the next break, somebody to look at it. Um, in Europe, electricity, energy, very expensive, so we naturally have a tendency to save it. So all parts of the line not used, automatically switched off, motor stopped, the arbor goes out of the way, and we even recuperate the energy when you have high moving masses, like for example the, 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 the rotation devices, each time they start, they break, that's energy. Instead of using and losing it in heat, you can get it back into the grid. I like the, the gentleman before with his two pieces of wood. This is actually a bundle of uh, lumber made uh, with a link line. And the uh, way well, it looks fairly good. From a distance, you can't even tell if it came through a planner or not. And um, that gives you a lot of advantages. On a marketing point of view, your product looks good. 
if you target markets where they do not want planned lumber, they want rough lumber, there you go. We have a tolerance of 0.2 millimeter. And the surface is always in what we call this coupe rabotant, so like a planned cut. And this is a great advantage for the planner mill. Immediately, your numbers look much better. Your green size target goes down. And again here, you become much more competitive. Now let's look at some uh, recovery uh, devices. So the, the round log rotation, yeah, that's the, that's the first moment in the line where you can actually already make it or screw it up. And every sawmill, well, way back in the old days when the guy was actually sitting here, he knew up front that it had to be turned like that or it would be wrong. Well, of course, we use the same principle, but uh, with uh, help of the, all the computer assistants. Now, the scanner has measured the envelope of that log. And with all the pieces he has in mind that the management has entered, what we need, when, which one are urgent or not, he says, this is the best cutting pattern for that very log. To reach that, we have to rotate that log 102 degrees to the left. And that happens in the spike rolls that you saw in the video before. So we rotate it, it comes to that position, and we maintain it. And our accuracy is five degrees. Five degrees on a watch that's less than one minute. That's what is standard operating conditions on the link line at the beginning, because you, have, you want to have it right from the beginning on. The diagonal alignment, well, you all know that. Um, if you shoot the piece through the cant, let's say by a centered alignment, you make the purple piece. The optimizer might say, hey, hold on. If you skew it over slightly to the right, you're going to get the blue piece. And it's very clear. If you do this for every log, every day, at the end of the year, those numbers are adding. As mentioned before, Link is doing curve sewing. Actually, we went even then to the so spline sewing and profiling. So that log actually is like a snake and has a curvature up and down. And we can not only sew it, but we can profile it on the go. And of course, you have an ups upside here, an angle. So those heads here have to stay tangential. That's what the orange um, arrows are showing. So it rotates slightly to follow the bow. On the right corner, you have some numbers. Now, the numbers are very conservative. They are usually above that, but we prefer to surprise than uh, actually the other way around. The, the round log rotation, as you know, yeah, that can be easily a two-digit number. Like the gentleman before me said, it's, it depends how, from where you start. So if you do nothing and as of a sudden you rotate it, yeah, you're going to have a 8 9%. But those numbers are actually more reflecting what the industrial can expect uh, over a period of time, over a period of volume. And you see for every three aspects the numbers that can be expected. Another recovery, um, another set of recovery features, the sideboard optimization. As we saw before, it is crucial for every individual log, especially when the price of the logs go up. You want to get the best out of your logs. And if here the optimizer says there is enough meat to do a piece of lumber, well, we're going to do it. There is a saying in Europe, the link lines make lumber not pulp. And that's exactly what you see here. On the other, you see the full optimization, which was shown in the animation at the beginning. And as, as we mentioned there, every log is treated individually and, is, and uh, is treated in the best possible way. 
on the picture here is very interesting. It's the same log, processed straight, and curve sewing. And it, it pops out. You see the gain in uh, volume. Again, numbers as guidelines in a very conservative way. Last year, we installed in, uh, in France um, a sawmill at Suji, very modern line, one of the most modern lines in Europe at this day. And I, I left some of the, the article that was published in the Buena International in France. And uh, the owner was kind enough to reveal what he got out of it. And um, it is an area where the competition for fiber is fierce. Everybody's fighting for the same logs. Now, that might sound something somehow familiar to you as well here. So he said, I'm not going to lose time to get more logs. I'm going to use the same logs, but I want to get more out of it. And with the link line, he achieved 20,000 more cubic meters per year. Converted in numbers here, that's 12,000 board feet, or a 5% uh, recovery. And then we come to the, the last point on the, on the summary. Once you have your investment uh, made, financed, you want that machine. And you want it installed properly, fast, and commissioned. And production should start on time as well. And that production curve, that steep production curve, is standard. We pretty much have always a similar looking um, startup. And to finish, a, com a summary. So we had the larger capacity, the reduction of the production cost, sown timber quality improved, much higher recovery, and once installed faster in gear, and well, that can only lead to a profitable investment. Here to uh, finish, last slide. So that's the, what we call the link family because most of our customers consider themselves as our partners, and we are usually in business for many years, if not generations. And we are virtually all around the world, from China to uh, Scandinavia to Sweden, Germany, uh, United States, and <coughs> since recently, here in Canada, with Edgewood Forest Products, which we started um, in January. That was it. Thank you.